Hello and welcome everyone to the webinar Inspiring STEM Activities to include in your non-STEM lessons. This event is part of the Scientific STEM Out of the Box MOOC, a STEM approach to non-STEM subjects. My name is Miriam Molina and together with my colleagues Jelena Milenovic and um, Barbara Cuarta, we would like to thank you for joining us. And before I pass the floor to our speakers, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. First, please make sure your sound is turned on and we would like to remind you that during this uh, webinar, your cameras and microphones are off. Secondly, if you have any questions, you are invited to write them in the chat and we will address them in the end. This webinar is recorded and we will publish it uh, in the course so you can watch it again if you wish. Uh, you will also have access to all the slides and links shared during this webinar. And now, without further ado, I would like to welcome our speakers. Today with us, we have uh, Osgu Osturk and Valentino Catricala. Osgu is a scientist ambassador and teacher of English as a foreign language, who will explain how teachers can incorporate STEM activities to their language courses. And Valentino is a scholar and contemporary art curator specialized in the analysis of the relationship of artists with uh, new technologies and media. So now, without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to Osco. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miriam. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so happy to be here with you. And first of all, I'd like to, to thank to the organization committee for inviting me to this wonderful event. And I also would like to thank every one of you for participating in this event. I hope you enjoy and have some takeaways at the end of the session. Well, uh, let me share my screen. Okay. I think you can see. Yes, perfectly well. Yeah. OK, uh, a little bit about me. Um, I've been an EFL teacher since 2005 and have conducted some uh, European Union projects like it's winning Erasmus and I. Uh, I've been introduced to Scientix in 2018 and uh, doing some uh, STEM projects with this wonderful initiate. And I was one of the uh, winner of STEM discovery campaign in 2018 uh, with my project STEM E for English. And I'm conducting some uh, coding festivals and workshops in my region, uh, doing some STEM projects uh, also. And in 2020, like everybody, we stayed home, but uh, we didn't uh, stop studying. Uh, I gave some webinars about STEM and since 2021 I've been a uh, scientific ambassador of Turkey. Okay, uh, sorry. Okay. Well, now I'd like to ask you uh, as English teachers or other teachers maybe, uh, which one of these activities do you use in your classes, in your English classes or the others? Project based learning, outdoor lessons, collaborative teaching, social emotional learning, intercultural learning, integrated skills activities, teacher oriented lessons or STEM. Uh, how are you familiar with these subjects? I'd like to learn about that. You can write the chat box and Miriam, <laughs> I think she will help me. Yes, we already have uh, some participants uh, saying, well, they use uh, PBL, uh, STEM, uh, social and emotional learning, outdoor lessons, uh, project based learning for science, collaborative teaching. Someone else also says outdoor lessons uh, from many different countries. So this is very interesting. All the above, but teacher oriented. Um, Someone else is saying collaborative learning, PBL, outdoor lessons, uh, STEM, STEAM, social and emotional learning. Uh, it seems that uh, many teachers are using many already. Teachers. Some yeah, of many these. teachers are using already these kind of uh, strategies in their lessons. Well, I want to say that you can do all of these 
uh, with integrating STEM activities in your classes. Well, uh, I love <laughs> Noam Chomsky and especially this quote from him. Uh, he's so right that if we are still teaching today the same thing as we did five years ago, either the pilot has died or we have. We need a change. Teachers should change the way they are teaching accordingly the necessities of the time in order not to be that uh, because we are teaching to the 21st century students, 21st century people. Uh, that's why our strategies, methodologies also be 21st century one. And the change starts with STEM. Uh, you all know, I know, <laughs> STEM term is S in STEM term, uh, S is for science, T, technology, engineering, and maths. Uh, this is an abbreviation of these subjects, but STEM is not a filed only for these subjects. It is for several activities, several subjects, and it's different kinds of subjects. Uh, it's a new way of learning combined with an interdisciplinary approach and with the use of art and all the other non-STEM topics, uh, it have been shaped. Now that this is an interdisciplinary approach and we have non-STEM subject to implement, we can integrate it in our English lessons uh, to empower our learners. Well, uh, according to the OECD report published in 2009, the changing nature of society and economy necessitates that educational systems equip young people with new skills and competences. Then this will enable them to benefit from emerging new forms of socialization. They will actively contribute to economic development in a knowledge based economy. These skills and competences are frequently referred to as 21st century skills and competences. And as it's stated in the Education and Skills for the 21st Century UNESCO report, Skills for the 21st Century Digital Literacy and Capacity Building uh, for Sustainable Development and Work Citizenships are lessons that all children, young people, adults must develop for education to make a decided contribution to achieving the Agenda 2030 together. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not going to tell you all about the blooms in details today. Uh, however, I'd like to emphasize its importance and the role of STEM in putting this theory into practice. Uh, well, it suggests uh, how the teachers should organize their objectives, uh, prepare their lesson plans, uh, create some activities to develop students lower and higher order skills like creating, evaluating, analyzing, etc. Uh, this is what we do by STEM actually. We make our students break down what they already know in order to identify relationships. We make them investigate the facts and come to conclusions. At the end, they develop something new with the information. And we can do this by integrating, bringing STEM subjects and non-STEM subjects together. Implementing STEM and non-STEM subjects together helps our learners reinforce their creativity, uh, working together, think creatively and to communicate. The main point in integrating English into STEM subjects as a non-STEM subject uh, is the aim of communication in another language. That makes our idea important because it is another competence. So, uh, how to use non-STEM subjects, where to integrate non-STEM subjects in our language class. Uh, here, I'll explain some of them step by step. Let me start with vocabulary teaching. Well, uh, as a language teacher, we have an ocean of STEM related vocabulary to teach because we are teaching any word in another language. These words, S, T, E, M, science, technology, engineering, mathematics is also a new vocabulary for our students. But of course we have more than that. Animals, planets, uh, they are all related with science. Tools, application uh, are the examples of technology vocabulary, you know, and so on. Uh, well, in my case, uh, there are sequence words which are 
firstly, secondly, thirdly, finally, my students prepare some projects with using these words. For example, my 11th grades made a safe experiment at home, uh, recorded a video that they were telling the experiment processes and wrote them into a Padlet, where you can see the link here. Uh, my 10th grades prepared some uh, do-it-yourself projects where you create something new with using waste materials and follow the same steps. And for the grammar, uh, well, I'm fed up with uh, making the students use the daily routine sentences for present simple. You know, I get up at seven o'clock, I wash my face and so on. Well, we can do this, but we can do something else. Um, for example, especially with young learners to teach about the life cycle of different animals would be extremely enjoyable. They love animals, you know. <laughs> uh, we all heard about the butterfly's lifespan, but have you ever heard about, uh, heard of penguin's lifespan? Have you seen a frog's in edible? <laughs> well, you can create yours. Actually, uh, my 11th grade loved to see the lifespan of aluminium, which I found a photo of it in the in Pinterest app. And if all teachers are creative, well, all teachers are creative, innovative group of teachers I see here. Uh, so uh, we can find other ways to implement STEM topics in English as a non-STEM sub subject, not only through our lessons, but also through some um, extensive activities, you know, for example, an extensive reading activity. You can find lots of uh, STEM related subjects uh, in the books, ebooks, uh, from various resources. And here uh, you see uh, some of them in my presentation, uh, both for teenage group or teen students, even for young learners, there are many kinds of stories you can find in the internet and you can use them as a storytelling activity or maybe a drama activity or role play activity you can turn it to. You can have your young learners who don't know reading yet some audiobooks as well uh, or you can simply tell them some science stories to uh, to make them interested in the topic. Um, well, now I want to talk about scientists. This is my uh, the huge, uh, hugest <laughs> resource. Uh, I use lots of things from this website. Well, uh, the inspirational resources uh, for all the STEM and non-STEM teachers uh, would like to implement STEM subjects into their lessons uh, is Scientix portal. As many of you know, Scientix is a portal for science teachers all around Europe. Uh, however, Good news, uh, it's not only for science teachers. It's open to all teachers from Europe, language teachers, non-STEM related uh, subjects teachers, um, who, who would like to uh, learn about STEM education, conduct some STEM projects, and find many kinds of resources uh, from articles to webinars and workshops. You can find many different kind of uh, resources in this platform. And from the Scientix repository uh, section, of which I'm, uh, it, it's, the link is shared in my uh, presentation, uh, you can find some teaching materials, reports, or uh, training courses for your uh, professional development, and so on. Um, you can find an example lesson plan from Scientix uh, repository, which I'd like to show you as an example. It is called A Journey from English Language Classroom to Mars. You see, a non STEM subject English is uh, combined with STEM subjects. You can search any resource from the repository by topics or uh, by ages, STEM strategy criteria and other many other things. After seeing the results, uh, you'll see the resources are available in multiple languages, so you can use it in your own language also. Well, this is a sample lesson plan for uh, young learners. Um, I prepared it for the STEM Everywhere and STEM IT courses. Uh, well, uh, I'd like to emphasize that young children 
are natural scientists and way more curious about the world around them when compared to teenagers or adult learners. You may find exciting to work with young learners because they're going to make you be enthusiastic and satisfied with what you are doing. Well, in this lesson plan, the teacher starts the lesson by telling a story. Well, she finds a drink in the kitchen and when she drinks it, she becomes smaller and smaller. And when she finds herself in the garden, she asks that what she can see in the garden. Then she plays a familiar song from YouTube, insect version of Finger Family, and she teaches the insects names. Then she asks for some discussion questions to the students. What kind of living things are there in the garden? Like that. If these insects are friend or foe, she explains the living and non-living things. Then they all watch a video on YouTube, how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, where the students will learn about the life cycle of a butterfly as a STEM subject in the non-STEM subject English, with using present simple tense as the grammar structure. Then uh, she explains what are what the box and pests are, the difference between them. They play a group game on a web tool, uh, 2.0 tool uh, learning apps. Uh, they group the bugs and pests. Uh, then the teacher reads a story about a girl and her father who works as a pest detective. Uh, pest detectives, you know, keep pests away from our houses. And before the story, the students discuss on how to keep pests away from houses safely safely and after the story they play a game on blueket an online quiz tool shows a video from youtube uh, preparing friendly insect traps and as an assignment students will design a safe trap for insects and this is the engineering topic of our lesson well uh, for students who who doesn't like building or are not interested in design and thing. Uh, some alternative uh, assignments can be given. For example, they can uh, color some uh, box uh, from the coloring pages uh, that the teacher gives as a handout. And finally, teacher gives a worksheet uh, on which there are some multiplication and coloring activity for the maths topic of our lesson. Well, it doesn't have to be a whole lesson plan. You know, you can also use some uh, a few minutes activities like a card game. Well, here you can see an example from Brainbox website. Uh, I love this site because uh, you can purchase the games to play in the physical room as well. Uh, well, in this game, I uh, make my made my students play online. Uh, the students are given some cards on which there are some pictures, you know, and they need to look at the card very carefully for 10 or 20 seconds. It changes according to the level age of your students. And, and then uh, they turn the card down and the teacher asks some questions. They need to answer the questions without looking at the cards if possible. Uh, if it's hot, then they can look at the cards and answer both ways uh, possible. You can decide how to play this uh, game according to the age and level of your students. Well, the questions like how many ladybirds can you see? Are the ants red or black? You see uh, the ladybird and insect vocabulary is, uh, to uh, is talked about here. And how many can, which, what, some question words uh, will be presented in this uh, by this way. Well, uh, a lesson plan, an activity, a game, we have talked about it. Now I'd like to show you some Scientix projects. You can find many project ideas on Scientix projects page. By search button, you can search for projects according to their topic or target group, uh, time or funding options. Uh, here you see again an example project on scientists. It's conducted by Life Terra, which is uh, one of Europe's largest climate action initi initiatives. And in this project, uh, they aim to bring people together to plant 500 million trees in five years, financing and monitoring nature's own carbon capture mechanism, and enabling citizens to take urgent action 
against the climate crisis. Uh, you can see the links here, uh, and when you get the presentation after the webinar, you can uh, go and check them. Another topic I'd like to emphasize here is SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, as a well, we can say it's a STEM and also a non-STEM subject. Uh, sustainable Development Goals are global call to action to end uh, poverty and protecting the environment, improving the lives and prospects of all people everywhere. All UN membership member states adopted the 17 goals in 2015 as a part of the 2030 agenda uh, for sustainable development. Uh, it is outlined a 15 year plan to achieve these goals. Today, Progress is being made in many areas, but overall action to achieve the goals is not moving at the required rate or scale. That's why we really need to implement SDG in our lessons regarding to a STEM or non-STEM subject. Um, here again, you will find my links to my lesson plans uh, about one of the most popular topics uh, from the SDGs goal 13 climate change and global warming. Uh, well, the name is global warning. Actually, it's not a Latin mistake. Uh, warning because we are doing this. Well, the teacher starts the lesson uh, talking about the weather today. Then she asks uh, if the students know the terms of global warming and climate change. After that, she shows a video from YouTube to get the students attention to the topic. And after this video, there is a brainstorming activity where the students discuss and write on a padlet about the causes, effects of global warming and climate change. Then a uh, teacher opens a reading text on the board. Uh, she can give it as a handout as well. Students will complete an QWL chart where they will write some sentences by using present perfect tense, for example, something they have already known, something they have always wanted to know, and something they have just learned. Then the students will play an escape room game. Well, escape rooms are very popular and very entertaining activities in the classes uh, these days. I highly recommend you to try one. I assume that you know about the time uh, escape room activities also. Well, they can be played to digital or face to face. There are some tasks to complete in order to get all the codes, find a password, and at the end they escape the room. And as an assessment, uh, sorry, assignment, uh, teacher gives students a choice board from where students can choose one from six different tasks to complete, uh, from designing to recording videos or, I don't know, creating posters, writing poems, why not? Uh, I personally like uh, choice boards because they give a chance to students to select their own assignment task according to their own interest. We don't push them to do uh, something that we uh, decide. Uh, on these links, uh, again, uh, you can find many other resources to work on SDG. You can have an inspiration for other goals, maybe, to uh, implement in your classroom. Well, if you are not uh, still sure about what to do or have an idea, but uh, not decided how to do, there I can suggest you one last thing. Scientix webinars. Well, uh, these are like uh, like this one. Uh, these are other live events uh, ca which can provide you the new inspiration. There are many different topics taught on these events and they can give you the assistance that you need to implement uh, STEM subjects in your non-STEM subjects. Well, here are the links uh, again for the Scientix at the bottom of the page. OK, <laughs> you can reach me by using the email here or on Twitter with this username. Now I'm all yours for your questions. 
Thank you very much, Osgo. That was a really interesting and practical uh, presentation. If you have you. any questions for uh, for Osgo, please write, uh, write it in the chat and we will address it at the end of the webinar. Um, okay. And uh, now I would like to um, pass the floor to our next speaker, Valentino. Uh, Valentino, would you perhaps like to start by telling us a little bit more about yourself? Hi, hi everyone. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here. And sorry, you probably you probably hear some a little bit of uh, some confusion, you know, behind the background sometimes because I'm in uh, um, I'm in London now and you know, I wasn't uh, so I didn't plan to be here, but anyway. Um, so yes, I'm Valentina. I'm the currently I'm the curator of the um, Modal Gallery in Manchester, which is um, uh, the gallery and the exhibition spaces of uh, the new School of Digital Art. Uh, the SODA, the School of Digital Art, is a uh, 35 million pound um, financement received by the Manchester Metropolitan University for a new school of digital art and a new art center. And uh, it's a, a brand new place and it's pretty interesting because uh, um, it connects uh, the uh, school, so the educational part with the exhibition part, but with the productions part as well, because uh, the, 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 the building is full of studios in which we are inviting artists and working there, you know, as like so creating a new kind of dynamism, dynamism you know, between educating, producing and um, and exhibiting as well. So it's somehow a new kind of uh, uh, education. You know, in Italy, we're still uh, very, uh, I come from Italy, as you can guess, you know, but uh, we are still very into the frontal relationship with students. Um, and here we're trying to create a new kind of environment, you know, which you no know, artists can come there, you know, high level artists working with students, working with you know, and creating like a real ecosystem. Um, yeah, uh, before um, I always worked around the concept of art and technology since uh, I started my PhD because I was interested in uh, how artists can reread technology, which is mean that um, um, it's not only of um, creating an artwork with technology itself, which is important, of course, because artists always use technology, but it's also giving a new interpretation of media itself using the technology that fundamentally are changing our society. So, which is mean that uh, you know, our uh, one thing is um, uh, is the, you 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 bring into you know a new world somehow. You know, is what I'm gonna talk now. It uh, because it, you're gonna create a new relationship within art and innovation. Because um, imagine a painter, you know, uh, painting he, he paints, you know, uh, with a brush, you know, close into their studio alone, you know got by paths of the of the passion of creation, you know, but he's basically alone. And then instead, if you want to work with artificial intelligence, you need technicians, engineering, research centers. So you need to engage and not conventional artistic spaces and places, you know. So you need to break into not conventional places. Um, so my research started from these. So what happened when an artist break into, you know, into a new, uh, our, not our spaces, you know, like a research center or, you know, uh, 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 like uh, in, working with engineering technicians or, you know, whatever, or companies as well, you know. Uh, so for one side, artists can gain in creating a new work and using you know, expertise and using, you know, uh, new, um, uh, like, you know, a very expensive technology. But at the same time, so, you know, the, the the question is what the innovation sector gain from, you know, the, 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 the work of artists, you know. So, um, and from this, I started my, my, um, I started my, my research part of my research, you know, because uh, uh, 
like into the relationship between art and technologies and so and rela sorry relation between art and innovation uh, how artists can change innovation you know from this point of view artists can be not only important for contemporary art works and not only as an uh, work creators but it can be also uh, someone who you know can can be an engine for innovation society and technology itself so the the, the sense this you'll see here is pretty common and conventional. Now today we are living in a complex society, new media like computers, smartphones, etc., etc., changing everything. You know, this is what we think. We think that there is this kind of waves of technology that change everything, like a direct line that goes straight, and you can stop it. So you think that this is that, like you know, um, undetermined uh, changes uh, driven by the technology development. You know, you know, from from here and you now we started to talk about post cinema, which is, you know, uh, the, the the new kind of cinema through technologies that, you know, cinema is changing because of, uh, you know, the advent of technology and then post media. You know, today we can conceive media uh, as we used to be, you know, because media, the concept of media itself is changing, you know, and um, so uh, this is uh, true. Absolutely. But what I want to show you is uh, that um th that you know this vision is driven by um the background of this vision is is driven by you know um conventional and uh, a, 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 a bit superficial point of view on technology itself so and the role of the artist can also help us to understand media differently you know so basically when we talk about um, uh, technology we have a deterministic idea of evolution of media itself you know we think that you know there is the market you know an abstract you know like entity you know, that creates technology and after this, you know, the technology arrive finally into society and then, you know, people, user, artists, everybody can use it, you know. So we always think this, you know, I mean, we, we, we think even in the art history, if you look at the, the, the history of video art, you know, there is always written something like, um, I don't know, you know, uh, the, 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 the electronic technology uh, were, were on the market and then video are started, you know, so the artist is always a passive, you know, user of technology as much as us, you know, people, you know, there is always this abstract, which is market. We don't know who, who represent this market. What is this market? We don't know anything about it. We just know that it, it creates the technology that we finally can use it, you know. I want to turn this vision, I want to, you know, see it from a different point of view and um, look how much the artist today can be important, as I said, you know, for this kind of, you know, in the first phase of technology creation, you know. And um, so when we talk about our relationship with art and technology, we usually speak uh, of, you know, uh, media art, you know. Um, this is a, fa a famous sentence written by Oliver Gra, who is a scholar based in Austria. I uh, can remember now the university, I think Kerms University or something like that, you know, who says that media, so the relationship between our technology is the art form that uses the technology that fundamentally changes our society and plays an important role in the reflection of our time. For more than 15 years, blah, 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 you know, critically address the vision of life science, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, what is it? What Oliver says is that, you know, the media art is uh, the art that engages the technology that are, fundam that are fundamentally changing our society. But uh, he is still stuck into the conventional consideration of arts, you know, uh, which is our conventional, is the common idea of arts, you know, that art can, can be something that help us to reflect on something, you know, to think of something, you know, if you, if you, if you uh, think of, just imagine yourself, you know, like in a bar, for instance, you know, talking about arts and say, hey, arts important because it helps us to reflect on our world, to understand our world. What I'm going to show you is that art is important not only to reflect on our world, but to change our world probably, properly, because it's not like a, a paint, and I'm not saying that art and technology is better than a paint, you know, it's a different, it's not in the quality of the single work, but, you know, a paint, it's, it helps us to reflect on something. Instead, the the um, instead you know uh, artists that engage technology itself can can engaging you know get back into the uh, world 
in which the spaces in which we really create something properly, you know, and I can give you some example of this, you know, like for instance, uh, this is a, a very famous project, you know, in the 1970s, which was uh, the Aspen Movie Map. And you can see from this picture that, you know, there was uh, there's a, a, a like a someone, you know, sitting there, you know, with two maps, one on the right and one of, on the left, you know, and these are the conventional maps, you know, from the from the top, you know, like like the topography, conventional topography map. But in front of this guy, you know, there is there is a screen and if you look at this screen now it, it looks like a picture just a photo but if you look in the bottom we can see that there are some bottoms like i don't know there is this stop play right left bottom you know so uh, what happened here you know michael neymar and rebecca allen you know they were two artists you know they they were invited by the MIT in the 70s and the end of the 70s by um, the engineer uh, Lippard, who, who was a very important engineer at that time, you know, and he, he had the opportunity to work into the, the, the engineer's uh, team and they, they brought an idea, you know, they brought the idea of creating a new, um, an interactive map of a city, you know. They started to, to work on this interactive map and and then they created the Aspen Movie Map, which is, you know, anticipated Google, Google, you know, uh, Street View for, you know, 30, 30, 40 years before than Google, you know, which is uh, a pretty interesting, it's a very important uh, example because I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my headphones, sorry, I forgot to do it because I bought it today, probably for this meeting because uh, I couldn't find today, this morning, hear me now perfectly well thank you okay, Valentina. very good very good so um what happened you know an artist was uh broke break into the uh, not artistic conventional place as i said you know because it's the mit is a an engineer sector you know and they <coughs> brought a germs a germs that grows into that 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 system you know and you know an artist can benefit it of you know having you know very advanced technology, a very great team, but at the same time, the innovation, the innovation sector, you know, benefit by a new idea. You know, of course, for Michael Neymar, and we have always to keep in mind this that for Michael Neymar and Rebecca Allen, they 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 didn't go there. They didn't want to do this because uh, they want they wanted to sell something. They didn't want to sell. They didn't want. They otherwise they wouldn't be just engineers. But they wanted just to experiment a new kind of orientation, a new a new idea of experience ourselves through the technology. For them, was the, a way to experiment, a way to create a new experience, you know, between technology, media, and the body itself. But at the same time, in this kind of linear process of creation, there are some some outputs that goes in very in different direction, and one of these is innovation innovation so and i mean looking back uh, uh, in, in the history we can also look back in the 1919 you know the clavilux of thomas wilfred wilfred was uh, uh, in the usa at that time and he created you know uh, he, he he had a lot of cinema experience but you know the, the image of cinema is recorded he wanted a new kind of uh, real life uh, uh, real-time experience of images and sound and then he created the club the clavilux which is this kind of piano that you can see in this picture you know is a, <clears throat> a piano with this and then he he had this the projection and then he, he was through a mechanic system he had he he, he 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 was able to play and to create new sounds and and images in real time you know an experience that it didn't exist before and it's something that is very contemporary because uh, what we have today is exactly you know every images is connected with a sound and every sound is connected with uh, with uh, with an images you know so at that time it wasn't so common at all because there were just seeming our recorded images and concert didn't have any images instead you know this the real-time experience you know created today is very common we have a new kind of experience of images you know if you look at every concert you see an image behind you know and the the, the connection between music and images is always more is our experience actually our contemporary and young experience 
actually, no. But and then also in the fashion design, you know, was pretty famous. This is another example uh, because in the 30s, when 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 uh, um, uh, technology uh, arrived, uh, um, uh, the homemade technology, let's say, you know, he created this kind of uh, clavy looks house for for for. Um, um for our you know like personal clavy looks let's say you know with a keyboard you can create your own music you know which is very interesting if you think that this was in the 30s in 1930s you know i mean much much um uh, before the advent of the personal computer so again jumping into history we are in the at the end of in the 90s the end of the 90s and um, tosho iwai uh, media artist based in uh uh, based in New York, um, created uh, the Tenorion, which was a rudimental, you know, um, a rudimental uh, uh, tools for creating digital music. Yamaha saw so it is the the company and invited Tosho Iwa to create another one into their company, and uh, so Tosho had the possibility to work with, uh, uh, I mean, advanced technology and very better you know expertise and he created the tenorion this that uh, for uh, for he why was uh, this was important for um of course doing performances you know it was a tool for he, for his own heart and um, and instead um yamaha uh, for yamaha was a tool to sell so again, you know uh, that a company engage an artist, you know that can create a new kind of uh, uh, idea, can bring into into a new kind of uh, you know an idea, a new 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 idea of uh, creating music, and uh, at the same time, uh, these tools is for arts because Toshio Iwa, you know, he had a lot of performance arts, electronica, MoMA, you know, in many important places. But at the same time, he also use it for. Um, for I mean, it, it, for you know, Yamaha used uh, as a as a as a tool to sell, so they they sold it and it was uh, pretty successful at that time. And now I mean, today we have the Launchpad, which is very similar, no, to 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 Tenorion. And um, so I mean, um, looking at the example we we have done, uh, we can uh, get back to our uh, scheme, you know, to the initial scheme. Which is, uh, you know, the one, uh, this one. Remember, you know, the market created the technology, and finally, society and people users can 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 use it, you know. And uh, but uh, uh, I would like to uh, give a different interpretation of this scheme, you know, uh, after our example, you know. So if we can put the artist on the top, and then like the trigger of a new idea of innovation and uh, uh, a new idea of uh, uh, creating an impact to technology. So artists, uh, the artists can be working with technology, working into, you know, um, uh, research center and whatever, you know, they can be a real engine for innovation. Uh, what I'm saying now is pretty, is not as uh, abstract actually, it's not just uh, some little example, but, um, uh, it's something very concrete. If you look, if you think that, uh, can you see my screen? I don't think so now. Hey, no, we cannot see it right now. Okay, okay, no problem. If you but, think, yeah, tell me. Sorry, Miriam. No, I'm uh, keeping an eye on 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 the clock. Uh, it's super interesting what you're sharing with us about uh, art yeah. technology. I think we already have many questions, uh, so. If you want, you can wrap it up and then we move on to the Q&A from, uh, from the participants, if you wish. Yeah, just very quickly, just show sure. you this example, which is like, you know, big company like Microsoft doing artist residency and creating, you know, um, one create department in which artists can work with engineering technicians, etc. Adobe or Google as well. And uh, you can look it up if you want. Um, I mean, so this is the the idea of the the fact that what I was saying, you know, that you know today is always more concrete. This relationship is not something abstract anymore. An artist can be a real engine for innovation, technology, and society. Thank you. 
Thanks a lot, Valentino. It's really, really interesting. Uh, I know that uh, it's it's never enough time in this kind of webinars to to cover everything. <laughs> we do our best, uh, but we will share all the links uh, that you propose uh, with uh, with the participants so they can also explore more. It was really inspiring, and I know that uh, they will be bringing it into the classroom. So now it's uh, time for uh, your questions. Uh, thank you very much, both Osgu and Valentino, for your great presentations and also for being with us today. Uh, so if participants, if you have any questions, you are very welcome to post them in the chat. And we have around 15 minutes to address them, so we will do our best because we also got many questions in advance in the course and in the Facebook group. So I would like to start with a very general question. Uh, we assume that all participants here know about STEM, about technology, about what we are talking today, but actually we had uh, some teachers asking, well, saying it is my first time joining a course about STEM. Could you explain what STEM, STEAM are in, in, uh, in your own words? Me? Anyway, uh, both yeah. of you, you're very welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, no, that's good. It's better that you go first. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Um, STEM is uh, an abbreviation for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as I mentioned in my presentation. That means you combine uh, two or three or all of these subjects in your classes in one topic, in one subject. And STEAM is something um, has been approved later on, and it's uh, A uh, letter it has, and this A refers to art. But uh, after this, we uh, we accept it as an art and all other non-STEM subjects, you know, uh, and it becomes something STEAM, and then and now it is. Uh, STEM and non-STEM subjects. I can explain it uh, in this way. What would you like to add, Valentino? But actually, I'm not very... Um, no, no, I agree with you. Um, I'm not very into... I mean, I know... So what I want to say is STEAM is pretty interesting, you know, because once what was STEAM, now is STEAM. Sorry, my Italian pronunciation that, that doesn't help to do this to 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 mark this difference. But uh, um, so the the fact that art has been included is very important today. You know, it's very important because as I show, art can also be um, a new wave of interpreting our society. And and then then when you interpret it and you make a new society, you make education. You know, you create another education. So it's very important to push this forward because so far, you know, when you talk about STEAM, as always, the the the, the art is, is. I mean, I mean, it is now in this kind of uh, now is included in STEAM, as I said, but it doesn't be been pretty much you know investigated art. You know, at the art perspective, it's always science, technology because they are more practical. You know, more concrete. It looks like instead. If you if we look at art in a different way and we start to include really art into education would be a big change in my opinion. Thank you to both of you. Um, also, we have uh, added out of the box as part of our title uh, for this course out of the box creativity. What do you think? Why is it important to to talk about creativity uh, in STEM subjects or in STEM uh, environments according to you? Can you repeat the question, Miriam? Sorry. Yes, the relationship between thinking out of the box, being creative, uh, making our students society creative. Why is this relevant in, in our technology, STEM subjects? W what's the importance of creativity in this sense? Um, if you look at the innovation and how the society has progressed, you know, it has been progressed, you know, through jump, big jump. And creation is always a create creation is always a jump into something that you don't know before. Art is the peak of the creation because it's poor experimentation. You know this is why big company now are, they are interested in arts. You know because they can the artist can be the first part of 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 innovation, which is the research part. You know that usually companies spend a lot of time. You know and then so this is why artists are so important today, also in creating new 
uh, idea for innovation. But at the same time, so this is the important thing for us, artists can create, can bring sustainability, can bring a new ethical concept, you know, which not based only on selling, only on because now be, the, our capitalism, uh, our uh, the capitalism and our society economy needs new ethical ideas, you know, and then art can be the real uh, vehicle, the real, you know, uh, I mean, the the, the 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 through which we can we can create a new ethical, an ed, more ethical society. Thanks a lot, Valentino. Also, uh, something creative or uh, innovative that Osgo you mentioned in your presentation was escape rooms. Um, maybe not all teachers uh, have implemented escape room. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit more how to set it up? Uh, what is this about? Okay, okay, of course. Uh, well, in my case, I pr uh, prepared an escape room as a digital uh, material uh, via Google Forms, you know, or you can use many other uh, presentation tools for preparing this, but Google Forms is the most uh, user friendly one for uh, building an escape room activity. Well, uh, at first you have to prepare some codes uh, to reach a, a latest uh, password, you know, and if you when you get this password, you uh, you have uh, done, finished all of the puzzles and you collected all of the codes, you reach this password and you finished the activity, mission completed thing <laughs> like that. We can say like that. Well, um, as to, um, for example, well, for example, um, there is a scientist uh, who was kidnapped by bad people and we have to uh, save him from the room that they locked him in and uh, to uh, to save him we have some clues uh, but we need some passwords uh, sorry uh, codes first for example the first task is uh, complete these sentences with the right words i'm talking uh, in my case in my uh, english uh, course because I'm an English teacher. Well, uh, the students will complete some uh, complete the sentences with some words and the first letters of these words. Brings them another word and this is the first code for their password. Then uh, we click on next and we uh, we um, we came to another task to complete it. Uh, this one can be about science or this uh, or something about related to maths lesson. Uh, for example, we we have a problem to be solved in English, and student when students solve this problem, they have a number. Well, this number is the second code to reach the password. And doing the other tasks, uh, they bring the codes together and they uh, they find a password. When they enter the password at the last page of the Google form, uh, it opens a lock, a metaphorical lock I have uh, with, with the key is this password, a lock unlocked and the uh, scientist was saved. If they uh, if they get the password wrong, then uh, you cannot reach the next page. Google says, Try again. There was something uh, you you have mistaken. Something like that you can prepare for an escape room activity online, and also for your room, for your classroom, you can prepare some task cards, just role play cards, and students uh, do the puzzles or solving the problems or doing something and any activity that can you you can use in your classroom, and. Uh, they have the codes, they combine the codes together and get the password and maybe you can bring the classroom a, a locked box with a key and you provide the key after the uh, right password comes to you. The students opens, uh, unlocks the box and there can be a surprising thing to uh, get the students emphasize or get the students interest, you know. These are what uh, comes to my mind right now. <laughs> you Sounds can really find challenging many and, uh, examples. Very nice. 
<laughs> Sorry, Miriam. You can no, no, no. find many examples on the internet for uh, escape room activity. When you write escape room activity to Google, you can find many resources. Sounds really, really fun. I'm sure that many teachers will try to include it in their lessons. We have barely five minutes, so I'm going to try to squeeze in two quick questions. Um, Valentino, you are also involved in uh, Maker Fairs uh, in the Movement Maker. Could you explain maybe a bit how schools can take uh, part of these uh, Maker Fairs? But the, the, the Maker Fair in Rome is the official European edition and um, is the biggest uh, creativity uh, fair on creativity innovation in, in Europe. It's funny because it's it, it is in Rome, you know, that it's not the first city for innovation, even if it's the city of the history of innovation, because if we have Colosseum, it is because Roman has been very good for innovation at the same time. So, you know, that is interesting as well to interpret history from this point of view. But anyway, and then uh, so the reason why we decided to open a new uh, arts section, which actually we're going to have a big uh, the, the the maker art which is the the, the art part of maker fair you know which is going to be the 6th of uh, october that new big installation this year this year it's going to be only quayola was a big installation of quayola which is an international renowned artist it is because we really uh, trust we really, really believe in the, the 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 what i said you know how uh, artists can help innovation so for me it was i always work with museums you know arts field but uh, you know in this case I, I, I could experiment how to bring art into the innovation and 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 field and um and and then you know the same times it was important you know because uh, i like the idea that school can enjoy uh, and can see this connection because uh, uh, Maker Fair has a very big community of uh, schools and scholars as well. I mean, not scholars, but you know, like uh, uh, child and school, and um, and they are very. It's very. It's it's very good to see how, you know, um, it it can be arts and the art session can be so interesting for them when they see the same media they use. Uh, every day, you know, from a different perspective, you know, when they say artificial intelligence used in an artistic and creative way or, you know, mobile phone, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yes, that is very, very interesting. And very inviting. Uh, I hope I can be there one time. I'm sure many teachers will will also would like to be part of uh, such a movement. I'm going to be a bit more greedy in these three minutes. I'm going to ask super uh, quickly one question to Osgo uh, that we also had in the course. Um, what do you think about combining uh, STEM activities in English and English in an outdoor setting, for example? Well, uh, as I said in my presentation, we can use anything to teach in our classes because we teach a language. So um, for the outdoor uh, activities, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, to prepare a science scavenger hunt. Uh, scavenger hunt is something that you have a list on your worksheet and you have to complete the tasks on this sheet. Uh, you have to uh, collect some items or you have to bring some photos of something, something like that. For example, um, in the list there can be water that is in the form of a solid liquid or gas or a natural resource. Find it and bring it or um, a shadow that is uh, 10 to 20 centimeters long. The students will uh, find the shadow uh, and take a photo of it and collect these items and brings uh, that to the teacher to complete the scavenger hunt activity. Or maybe you can uh, try to some survival uh, activities uh, with your uh, teenage students, of course, because the young learners are not so suitable for doing some kind of things. Maybe your students can uh, build a tent uh, put on a tent, sorry, or uh, they can light a fire, they can uh, cook their own food uh, in the forest, maybe. Uh, this can be the outdoor activities uh, could be done. And when while you are doing that, all the students speak English. These are just comes to my mind. There are lots of ideas on the Internet. When you write uh, outdoor activities, you can find many things. 
Thank you very much, Osgu. Thank you very much, Valentino. You. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined us today. As mentioned earlier, you will have access to the recording of this webinar and also to the slides and links um, that our speakers shared. Uh, we will publish it, publish it in the course. We're looking forward to see you on Wednesday, the 5th of October in our Teach Meet. You will find more information in the live events section of the course. Thank you, everybody. And thank bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Bye bye.